I believe, of the 20th century. Through an interesting set of circumstances, Jim Thorpe's widow heard about the drive for economic survival in the Mokchung towns, and she approached them for assistance in securing a suitable burial place for her husband. It was then agreed that if the towns of East Mokchung and Mokchung would merge, change their names to Jim Thorpe, and erect a monument to his name, she would allow Jim to be buried here. In May of 1954, the town of Jim Thorpe was born when the two towns merged. A beautiful 20-ton red granite memorial honors Jim Thorpe's resting place. The memorial bears the words of King Gustav V of Sweden as he presented the 1912 Olympic medals to Jim Thorpe, stating, Sir, you are the greatest athlete in the world. Jim replied, Thank you, Mr. King. Today, the town of Jim Thorpe sits quietly on the banks of the Lehigh River and looks much as it did 150 years ago when carriages clattered down the streets, train cars rolled along its rails, and barges floated down the Lehigh Canal. Coal was king back then, and the town was one of the most prosperous shipping locations in the country. Now sit back, we'll wait for the conductor to give his go-ahead, and together we'll enjoy a ride into some of the most beautiful mountain scenery in Pennsylvania. Constructed Pennsylvania Route 903 Bridge. Jim Thorpe Memorial is located on Route 903 at the north end of town. 903 heads towards Blakesley, deep in the Pocono Mountains. Town of Jim Thorpe, situated on the southwestern tip of the Pocono region, which includes Carbon, Monroe, Bike, and Wayne counties. Millions of people visit the Pocono Mountains each year to participate in outdoor activities, stay at one of the dozens of resorts, or take sightseeing trips. Coming up, the new 903 Bridge. This is the third one for this town. They were constructing the, this one, and then old one was still up when I was here. After we've passed under the 903 bridge, we'll be in the June Park Rail Yard. The original engine house was torn down in 1945 to make room for the large turntable. This turntable that you'll see to the left of our train is operational. We currently use it during our steam train excursion. There, look at that. There's the car that used to be by the station. There's the open car. There's their switcher. The hiking and biking trail to the right of our train. That is the link the trail on the Lehigh Gorge to the town. On my way back, I came. This trail is a portion of the 165-mile Delaware and Lehigh National Harbor Corridor. If you ride one of our popular bike trains, this is the same path you would glide down for the 25-mile return trip from Whitehaven to Jim Thorpe. I've always wanted to do that. 25 miles. I've done 10 on ballast, which is underneath the big rocks that are basically like this big. I've done it. Reading Pennsylvania. Our 
Going down High Ridge and full foliage excursions take that line during our busy October season. After we've taken the switch to your left, you'll see the abandoned BQ switch tower that at one time controlled trains at Nesquahoning Junction. The tower closed in April of 1972. After we've taken the switch, we'll be riding on the Reading and Northern Railroad's main line through the Lehigh Gorge. Coming up, Nesquahoning Junction and PQ Tower. If he's on time, the Reading excursion train that's coming into Jim Corp should be waiting for us to pass at the intersection. That would be the silver RDCs that be to the left. Those things are really cool. It's its own commuter engine. getting a horn signal from the rail diesel cars that are coming in from Reading. They'll be on your left hand side. There they are. We, it's always fun to beat them to the intersection. <laughs> right after we pass PQ Tower, we'll be out on this Mahoney Bridge, which crosses the Green High River. The bridge offers spectacular photo opportunities on both sides of the train. If you look to the left, you'll see the Lehigh River directly underneath of us. If you look down river to the right, you'll be able to see a portion of the town of East Jim Thorpe. This bridge was reinstated to allow for the opening of the Lehigh Court Center Railway in May of 2005. Also off to the left, from the midway across the Nestle Hunting Bridge, you'll see a new bridge under construction. That's a freight cutoff for Tamaqua. Reading and going south and west. It will save quite a bit of time on freight trains that have to Y here. After the Nesquahoney Bridge, we'll be out on the Coalport Bridge. It passes over the Reading and Northern Railroads, the Heighton Branch, and also the Norfolk Southern Lehigh Line. This was the former Lehigh Valley Railroad that was once owned by Asia Pack. The Lehigh Valley Main Line went from Penn Station in New York City to Buffalo, New York, a distance of over 440 miles. Like just for, and that's like, just for, and that's 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 just for, it was a railroad-owned summer resort built in 1885 and attracted many visitors from the big cities. The four-story hotel boasted an 80-foot-long bar and was only accessible by the railroad or by hiking. The hotel burned in 1911 during a mountain rush fire and was never rebuilt. When we're out on the bridge, if you look over your right shoulder, you'll be able to see the remains of the old Jersey Central Railroad tunnel carved out of solid rock through the mountain. A hundred years ago, we'd have been riding through that tunnel as opposed to the track we're on now. But the trains got too high and too wide, so the railroads laid the track that we're on now to go around, and that wouldn't be necessary to use the tunnel anymore. It is, however, open to hikers if you're so inclined. Glenoco Falls, which this area is named after, are not visible because of the foliage that runs up to the falls and because we haven't had a heavy rainfall for some time, you can't see the falls. But in addition to that, just this year, the state of Pennsylvania blocked off the only path up to the falls due to recent accidents and accidents over the years. People that were really quick to climb to try to get up to the falls and were injured. So that path was closed permanently. 
uh, the falls would be to your left. All the way back in, there's a crevice where the two mountains come together, and all the way at the top. And you might be able to see a trickle up here, but I doubt it. We couldn't see anything yesterday, and it hasn't rained since, so obviously there's not going to be anything to that. If you were really thinking of visiting the falls, sorry about that, you just can't do it. The park rangers keep a close eye that nobody goes up there. There are so select picture, I, pictures I've seen of it. I can't get it without opening the window. The railroad tunnel. All right, we're coming out over the bridge there. now. If you look over your right shoulder, you'll get a good look at the old Jersey Central Railroad tunnel. Yep, right there. You can't really see it. The, that entrance, it's only like from the this to here high because of the dirt. The area that out. we're in right now is obviously called the Rock Cup. This is the Southern Gateway to the Lehigh Gorge State Park. People watch for some of Pennsylvania's wildlife, like deer, black bear, turkey. And Pennsylvania State Bird and Rough Grouse are just a few of the animals that we see along our line. Every so often, a hawk or an eagle can be spotted. The Lehigh Gorge State Park includes plenty of Pennsylvania State Flower of the Mountain Bar, along with native oaks, maples, poplars, and birch trees. This wide spot that we're in right now is known as Hetchel. It's one of the few places with the tracks of the Lehigh Valley and Jersey Central Railroads ran side by side at the same greater level. The Central New Jersey roadbed is now the biking trail which extends over 25 miles to White Haven. The name Hetchel comes from Hetchel's Tooth, the rock outcropping on the mountain high above the train. Keep a lookout for different species of birds along the way. This area is well known for witnessing birds of prey circling high above us. It is not at all unusual to see a hawk, a vulture, and an occasional bald eagle in the gorge. We had two families of bald eagles in the gorge this summer. The Lehigh River is a tributary of the Delaware River and is 109 miles long. The word Lehigh comes from a Lenape Indian word or phrase that means where there are forks. Its upper course has numerous class two and class three rapids and supports a range of outdoor activities including rafting, kayaking, and canoeing. The river holds many species of fish including trout, smallmouth bass, largemouth bass, carp, and catfish. The river rises in the Pocono Mountains at several ponds in Lehigh Township in Wayne County. The lower course of the Lehigh River runs through the historically important anthracite coal and steel producing region of Pennsylvania. We got a caboose. The river was entirely owned by the Lehigh Coal Look, Navigation Company we got a from the mid 19th to mid 20th centuries due to the operation of the Lehigh Canal. The Lehigh River from the southeast to Allentown where it curves east passing back to reach east and where it joins the Delaware River. The same thing. Yeah. If you look to the right of our train on the other side of the bike trail, you'll see a depression. That depression is the remnants of the old canal that used to run here before the railroad. You'll see evidence of the old canal now and then uh, on the right side of the train all the way up to our destination, which is Old Penn Hill. on the line and forms almost a half circle. 
The name Oxbow is a holdover from the days when the canal system operated on this part of the river. The boaters thought that the curve in the river resembled an Oxbow Rio used when oxen pull wagons or other heavy loads. About halfway around the curve, we will pass underneath what looks like a footbridge. This is actually an oil pipeline that's suspended above the track of the river. The span is about 365 feet across. This was one of the original oil pipelines in the country and ran between Oil City, Pennsylvania and Linden, New Jersey. Today, fiber optic cables are inside the pipeline. On the opposite side of the trail are the remains of a former canal lock. This portion of the Lehigh Canal from White Haven to Mock Chunk See the line? the upper grand section and totaled 20 dams and 29 locks. It was destroyed by a severe flood in the 1860s, and railroads were built through the Lehigh Gorge in its place. Coming up, Oxbow Curve. Oil City is near Bradford. That's quite a distance to, make, to transport oil. This mile post 128. This indicates that we're 128 miles west of Penn Station in New York City. Pictured on top of the milepost is the white-tailed deer, the Pennsylvania state animal. Watch for other mileposts in the gorge. The point where the original tracks of the Lehigh Valley Railroad curved to cross the river when the railroad was first being built in the mid-1850s. This was an important location on the canal system and then on the railroad. An entire community was located here which was one of only a few places unapproachable by roads east of the Mississippi. This is not a station stop and no one will be permitted to leave the train. Once the train comes to a complete stop, those seated in the standard coach, which today will be everybody, may get up out of your seat and push or pull the middle of the seat to change direction. If you need help with your seat, a car host will assist you. Train's gonna run. He's gonna do a run around. He'll be on that side. We're just gonna move the seat. These move. And then he'll come down the left side of our train as we sit right now. He'll pass us, come back out onto the main, back up, connect. We'll do a mandatory brake test and we'll be on our way. We'll be here about 10 minutes.